Welcome to the 8-Bit Shack. My name's Tony. And today we'll be looking at this. A Dragon 32. A Welsh wonder. This is a loft find. It was given to me by a friend. I, as I understand it, it's been in the loft for 35 years. Never seen the light of day since it was put away. So, I'm going to take it across to my workbench and open it up and see what we have. Right I've, right, I've got the Dragon 32 here on my workbench, um, still in its outer box. Um, so the outer box looks to be in, in really good condition. But before I take it out and have a look inside, I think we should have a little look at the Dragon 32's history. So I'll start off at Wikipedia and we'll see what we can find. The Dragon 32 was introduced to the UK market by a company called Dragon Data in August of 1982 and it was one of many new home computers that appeared in this year. Dragon Data was set up by a British toy company called Mectoy to enter the new and fast growing home computer market but like many home computer companies from this time it was short-lived and Dragon Data ceased trading in 1984. If you want a more detailed history of the Dragon I suggest you check out Tony Smith's The Dragon is The Dragon 32 is 30 from 2012 it's an excellent read. There's also other good history reads from the websites of World of Dragon the Nostalgia Nerd and Binary Dinosaurs. Electronically, the Dragon 32 and Dragon 64 sh share a very strong resemblance to the Atandi Atesor 80, a colour computer or the Coco. And this has much to do with the Dragon using the same chipset from. Motorola as the Tandy computer. The specs for the Dragon 32 are in Motorola 6809 which is clocked at 0.83 megahertz so there's 6809 there and in Motorola 6847 a video display controller. The 6809 was considered by many to be the best 8-bit microprocessor of this time but never achieved the same success as the 6502 or Z80 but it would be used by many industrial products. I'll put these links in the description. Right we have the Dragon 32 is the inners out of the outer box so <laughs> I'm really excited to see what's inside this. As I said, it's it's been in, in someone's loft for 30, 35 years. So let's have a look inside. Oh, well there you go, look at that. Look at that, it's dropping 32 there. Just move that light a bit so you can get a better focus on the camera. Look at that, that looks in really, really good condition. There's hardly any marks on it. The case looks really good. Um, let's see what else we've got in the box. So obviously we have a power supply. A big brick of a power supply. We also have some leads. Looking from that, so that's got, that has mic and ear on. So I suspect that's for the tape cassette. Another set of leads, probably the same again. Another tip, cassette lead. Not sure what this is. Oh, all right, I know what it is. It's, it's, it's a dust cover, right? Don't see many of those. So this looks to be really good condition. I'm. Going to um, basically get it 
out of the polystyrene test the power supply we'll test this basic power supply brick and then basic, then connect it up to a TV and see if it's working right I've got the Dragon 32 power supply on my workbench a couple of things to note about it first of all obviously because of its age um, it has the old style UK free pin plug I'm going to replace that um, a bit later and the other thing is which is a bit, a bit unusual is it uses a nine way D connector um, for the power which is a little bit unusual because most power connectors from that time were either a DC bubble jack or a circular DIN connector so it's a little bit strange but it's not too hard to use uh, I have a this is another nine way D a, a connector which I'm going to just basically connect in, uh, into this the other thing I'm going to do is I've got a little helping hands uh, jig here which I'm just going to connect to here just to make it a little bit easier to measure the, the voltage I have my as you well, I have my multimeter here to set the ESC let's set the ESC and I'm just going to plug this in now um, so it's all plugged in now so from the data uh, from the website dragon32.info pins one and two should have about eight and a half volts ESC so let's just measure these and we've got 8.9 so that's not too bad for an unregulated ESC supply the other pins are pins three and five which is a center tapped ESC supply of 28 volts so, so pin 3 and pin 5 oh, and we've got about 30 volts which again isn't a bad value for an unregulated ESC supply so I think this I think this power supply is good so I'm now going to get the Dragon 32 computer on my workbench and power it up and see if you can get some video. Right, I have the Dragon 32 back on my workbench. I have the power connected to it. Also have the RF video lead. So I'm just going to power it up. <laughs> Look at that. Amazingly, this Dragon 32, which has been in a loft, and for 35 years, uh, basically powers up. And although they go on site, the screen looks a little bit green, but I'm impressed that after 35 years, this is still looks good. Right, I've made myself a composite video lead for the Dragon. So we have the three RCA connectors going to a five pin DIN. So I'm going to plug this in, uh, in the back of the Dragon and also into this TV I have here, which is already set up for composite. So let's see what we've got. So I'm going to put it into the TV first. So that's the video in. And the left audio and the right audio. Power up, make sure that's ready. And plug this into the back. Plugged in, so let's switch it on and see what we've got. 
And there we have it. We have a Dragon 32. Um, that's 35 years old. There's a loft find. Talking to a modern LCD TV via a composite a video lead. So, that's great. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving some feedback, a comment, or even subscribing to the 8-bit chat. Until next time.